is going on YouTube, in this video today I have got a brand new Wolverine Ultimate gaming controller by Razer to unbox. Now for some time people have been coming onto my Elite Controller versus Scuff Controller video and commenting that the Razer Wolverine is a better controller than both of those. A lot of people have been very positive about it and I thought I want to try one. I've been waiting some time. Um, I've always said that I'm waiting for Razer to, to send me one. Uh, but now I've got one. It's here and I am going to unbox it. There will be a review to follow which will come maybe two or three weeks after this video comes out. I want to give myself some time with the Razer to get used to it and really uh, get to grips with it as it were. But this video is just about unboxing and having a quick look at it. So here's the box. Let's open it up and take a look inside. And there we have it. It is the Razer Wolverine Ultimate carry case. Quite similar to the uh, to the Xbox Elite controller carry case. We've got a little cardboard box here at the front. Let's take that out and open it up. Um, it doesn't look particularly easy to open. I don't want to damage the box in case I have to send the controller back. Um, but okay, so we can just take this out of the side. This is the cable for it. Now, what you may or may not know about the Razer Wolverine Elite is that it's a wired controller. Although the cable is detachable, you can't actually use it as a wireless controller, unfortunately. Now, this is supposed to be a professional controller, and the reasoning for this is that you have literally uh, no latency when you're using the controller. Normally with a wireless controller, there might be a bit of latency, meaning that when you press the button, there's a bit of a lag between pressing the button and what actually happens in the game. Whereas with a wired controller, you shouldn't get that at all. The cynic in me says that it's because uh, Razer didn't want to pay Microsoft the licensing to use the wireless technology, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. So we open it up, we take the controller out, and as we can see, much like the Elite, we've got removable thumbsticks here. They're not actually as easy to put put back on as the Elite ones. The Elite ones just pop back on, but these ones seem to fight against you. The magnets are, uh, you know, are, are opposite polars, it feels like. So yeah, you've really got to uh, work hard to get these back on. The Ultimate controller comes with the headset adapter at the bottom already as a part of it. It's not just a headset adapter, it allows you to actually switch profiles and remap the buttons um, and also control game sound and party chat and uh, game chat volume uh, levels. On the back we've got four paddles here that can't be removed, they are stuck in place. And at the top on the back we have the hair triggers, much like the Elite. And then we've got two extra buttons in between the bumpers and the triggers which seem like they're a bit easier to reach than the bumpers. Uh, we put the hair triggers on and to be honest, you can feel that they're hair triggers when, when you enable it, but um, they're actually quite a short throw when you don't have the hair triggers enabled anyway, which doesn't seem too bad. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try. Thumbsticks seem okay. The build quality feels like a regular controller. It is very light, a lot lighter than the Elite. I will give it that. The D-pad there, that can be changed as well, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Let's take a look at one of these thumbsticks. So you get a longer thumbstick, just the one longer thumbstick, which you can use to replace. Most people would put that on the right-hand side, which would be the aiming thumbstick. That gives you that bit extra control. So yeah, most people will put that on the right, just like that. And then also in the box, we've got a single convex thumbstick, much like you'd get on a PlayStation, if that's your kind of thing. Personally, I don't really like the, um, the thumbsticks that are like that. My, my thumb just comes off them too easily. And I don't generally use the longer thumbstick either. So when I first start using this, I'll be using the shorter sticks as they come out of the box. So on the controller, you have the individual button D-pad. And then as the option, you've got the rocker version of D-pad, which is pretty much what you get on a standard controller where you can roll your thumb around it and it's all just one unit. Whereas with the other D-pad that's a standard, each button is actually individual and slightly raised up higher than this one, it feels. So I don't know which one I, I would prefer. I think I'll probably try it with the default D-pad on at first to see what it's like and then um, try mixing it up. And that just slots back in there. It's not magnetized. It just it sort of sits in there. It feels like it doesn't feel magnetized at all. And that's pretty much it. That's the Razer Wolverine Ultimate. That's what you get in the box. You get the wire, you get the controller, you get one long stick, one regular size convex stick. You get the two standard sticks and two D-pads. Uh, and that's the controller. So as I say, there will be a review coming out in the next two or three, maybe four weeks. Uh, I want to see how I feel about it. I don't want to jump the gun on this one and do a review on it. So many people have said good things about it that I want to really give it a try. So I'll try it with 
Siege, maybe a couple of other games, maybe some Forza. Um, I've just picked up Soul Calibur 6, so I might give that a try with it as well and see how I fare with it. Um, but at the moment, it, it feels it feels interesting. It's an expensive controller, so I'm expecting big things from it. And it's also had a lot of praise on one of my other videos, as I say, uh, from owners of the controller. So I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. Hopefully you've liked this video. If you've got one, let me know down in the comments some tips and tricks on how to set it up best, how, how I can make the most of this controller. Interested in what you've got to say on it. If you did like the video, click the like button, hit the subscribe button also, and get your notifications to make sure you don't miss out on the review video of this controller. If you're thinking about getting one and you want to know what it's like, stay tuned for that. I will um, I will let you know my thoughts on it and give you uh, my, my honest opinion on, on how I feel about this controller. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.